Oh, here we are. Morning after our sail down. Back in old Pancor Marina. We are going to try our best to make the quickest turnaround possible here. We do have quite a lot of packages to collect. Uh, we have a few things to install. We've got to finish off this battery in installation. We are going to go stay off of the boat. The thing about working with a two-year-old child is that you can't get anything done. <laughs> so now that we are in the marina, they have really good accommodation, like which is cheap. A short walk away, literally across the road from the marina. And so now we can just move family off so we can sleep in aircon. I can go ham and just pull everything apart. That's why mum and daughter are getting off the boat. <laughs> <laughs> hey Leila! So mum and daughter are off to the park I think is the best place to wear up a bit of energy. There is a playground close by, which is good. So this here, this is the bus bar for the house bank batteries uh, that was installed in Thailand. This is in preparation for the battery installation, which will happen here whilst I'm finishing off the AC cabling and wiring in the battery charger. All of this will be completed by the time we leave Bangor. Through this door here, that's the entrance into the man cave. And under the couch here, you can see it's just one big empty space. Uh, all of this I will change because we're going to install hopefully up to 2,000 amp hours of lithium. Uh, hopefully I can squish them all in here. Um, so we're going to have a massive uh, house bank of lithium so we have all the power. There'll be two banks, one under this side of the couch and another one under here and they'll all link together at the common at the buzz bar. But underneath the couch here, you can see it's just so much wasted space. There is a poorly installed manual bilge pump. There's another manual bilge in the cockpit, and then this one here goes to the forward compartment underneath the fuel tanks. I still keep this manual bilge because it's good to have a manual bilge pump. Um, but we want to take the water away from the battery compartment. <laughs> I think that's kind of important. So I guess one of the first jobs I need to do in preparation is to move this, uh, I think I'll change it so it routes underneath the generator here into the man cave and then the manual bilge to be in the man cave. Yeah, it's not very good, is it? No. Did it change it? Dad change it? Yeah. Okay. You can see how manky this is. It's not attached at all. And then it's dripping water everywhere. And the last thing you want is water getting into your battery compartment. I'll just finish sucking out this last bit of bilge water. Just another job I need to attend to is doing the bilge pumps, but that's the first thing you need power to run the bilge pump. So it's one step at a time once again. Whoa. Shit. There we go. Hose just popped. Exactly the reason why you don't want water in your batteries. Ah, I need more towels. Not ideal. Not ideal. Sorry, Benita. Has to be done. What are you? Better? Jeez. Way to put the uh, get the camera in the action. <laughs> One of the joys in purchasing this boat was, was that stuff in the stores and all the little added extras. And some of that was this, was this hose that was just in the stores. And that just happened to be exactly the same hose that they had used to put this pump in. This was definitely put in by a recent owner. It's definitely not original to the boat. But yeah, so that's just realigned now to put the pump in now into the engine room. So that should be pretty sweet. That will now keep all the batteries super dry. Just imagine this scenario. I install all the lithium batteries, go to use the manual bilge, and it pops off like that and squirts water all over those batteries. Oh, what a scenario that would have been. So this is a good bit of preventative, so now there's definitely no water going in to the battery bank. 
pretty important. We've got the, got the brains trust in today. I'm just trying to try my hardest to figure out the multiplus because the AC power is such a new thing. And it turns out that Mike is a very smart man and yeah. he has exactly this system <laughs> on his old boat. So, and, as he, and is currently installing very something similar on his current boat. So. Yeah, so if you can't get an electrician in, just get some other yachties in. Yeah, just, just wear around. <laughs> <laughs> Well, my mind is absolutely boggled. <laughs> uh, all right, we're trying to finish off the electrical system now for Nancy 2.0. So we've got the new charge controllers. This is a charger inverter, the MultiPlus by Victron Energy. So the MultiPlus here, this will make the shore power and the generator power charge our house bank of batteries. Uh, it's also an inverter, so when we just we don't run the Jenny, everything's just all off the batteries. Uh, we able to invert that power to AC because the boat has so much AC. Uh, so then we can run our air conditioners and the water maker just direct, directly off of the batteries without having to run the generator. But the generator is there to replenish the batteries if we need it. And that sort of goes through the charge of this MultiPlus. So this is a very new thing for me. Uh, that's why we had Uncle Mike around here earlier. Uh, and just trying to understand the wiring of this for the AC and the DC sides. We got a whole lot of solar we're going to install. So we got this massive charge controller that needs to fit in this hole. There is the old charge controller that I'll reuse for the solar panels that we're going to install on the Bimini. The servo is the brain, so all of these plug into the servo, which then dis uh, displays it to the little touch screen over on the nav station, exactly like we had on Nanji. Then we've got the circuit breakers for the solar panels coming in from the davits before they go into that charge controller, and for the ones on the Bimini. The installation of the solar will happen down the track, but now that we're doing all the wiring and all the electrical side, I'm just preparing to have everything already set up, so then we just put the panels in and we just plug them in, and then we've got power. But, yeah, it's a tight little hole there. Uh, the MultiPlus is a lot bigger than the Centurion charger that was in there beforehand, so that takes up a lot more space. This charge controller, this 150 over 85, is huge! I probably should have pulled it out of the box before I uh, <laughs> instantly in my thoughts think, oh, I'm going to install this in this hole. So I made up this little backing area, so I'll just stick a flex back to the hole like it was already done with the previous charge controller. But that charge controller is in the way, so I need to rip that out, move it over, mount everything on this new one to position in, and then we can start running the cables. Then we do the multi-plus, because where I'm sitting underneath here is where the bus bars are for the house bank, and everything's running off the bus bars, because there's two house bank of lithium going in. Man, I don't know if you're confused yet, but I'm definitely confusing myself. So the best thing is to just start wiring, start installing, get the layout, and then start connecting the cables, join the dots. Heaps of stuff to install, eh? Right, so I'm just gonna do this. Entertain yourselves. <laughs> Any other tips for me? Yeah, yeah what else? This. this. Yeah. yeah, stick it down, eh? Yeah. Alright, high five. You're probably wondering, if you're so confused, Josh, why have you got all this gear and how are you going to install it yourself? Yes, it is a bit confusing. I like to install it myself so I do understand it. I've been over this so many times with the Brain Trust. We are very lucky that we have a bit of a Brain Trust. Shout out to you, Pete. Your brains and your knowledge and the way you research things is. Uh, to be honest, we rely on it. <laughs> no, it's, it's great to be able to talk to you and bounce ideas and figure all this stuff out with you. So cheers, Pete, good on you. Uncle Mike, who dropped around before, if you watch this video, mate, thanks for your knowledge too. Uh, it's, just, it's through the assistance of asking questions and reading myself and just trying to figure all this out 
uh, and just asking questions with people that are in the know. Pete, smart man, Uncle Mike, done this three times, uh, three different boats. So for these people to share their knowledge uh, with me, it's a massive thank you that we have people that are willing to assist and just share their knowledge and share their brain power because I need it. I'm not very smart. Um, I know I've asked Pete a million questions of the same in different words and I'm pretty sure I did the same with Mike just before. Uh, ask him the same thing five different ways. But <laughs> I've got a, good, got a good understanding of it. Got good diagrams with Pete. Got drawing a good diagram through with Uncle Mike. So um, we're on, on point now. There's a lot of work to be done, so basically all I need to do now is put it together. So, let's do it. If you think about it too much, it's actually really confusing. But when you break it down into each little area, you just have to concentrate on that. Hey, it's not actually too bad. So that's what I'm trying to do now. And yeah, just have to figure out where it's all gonna mount and make it look pretty. Day two, I sort of got up to everywhere I could yesterday, but I just sort of ran into dead ends because I need to attach the fuse to the switch and I need to attach the shunt to the main negative buzz bar. Rather than using cabling, that's added extra distance which will drop the amps, won't give an accurate reading. So I'm, I want to use a buzz bar between these two areas. Uh, that's sort of my plan. And rather than going searching for buzz bars, we do have our batteries that are rocking up hopefully tomorrow, and with those batteries comes a whole heap of buzz bars to attach the batteries to each other to make one big bank. Um, so therefore, I'll just stop where I am right now until we have buzz bars rather than driving around town trying to find some. Might just start dismantling everything. She may sound a little bit rough at the moment, but let her just sort of iron out her own wrinkles. <coughs> that was a big, a big, big fix it that happened yesterday was how we got both the air cons running. So we got the saloon air con running and the one in the aft cabin. So these are both uh, operational now, which is really good. Man, check this out. So there was a blockage in the outage water line for the aft air con and comes down, we just found this fitting, and my god, how close was that thing? Fully blocked, but anyway, so all of that, that's changed. The after air con runs a lot smoother than what does here in the saloon, but wasn't making this noise yesterday, we've got to work in. That matter, she's operating. Today's gonna be the first full day when she's on all day. That's blowing cold air. Let's have a cool, let's have a cold boat, hey? Let's have a cold boat to work in. The old battery charger that used to be on Nanji 2.0 was only compatible with AGM uh, and gel batteries and lead, acid batter and lead acid batteries. It actually wasn't compatible with lithium, even though it was broken and had to be ripped out anyway. Uh, even if it was fixed, it wouldn't have mattered, it would have had to take it out because it's not compatible with the lithium that we are installing. So the Multi Plus is a little bit different as well. This is a charger inverter uh, and so it's actually wired a little bit differently. Previously when the boat's plugged into shore power or the generator's running, the power would come from either the outlet or the generator through a main circuit breaker for each one of those lines into the switch at the, at the nav station, which you'd then decide whether it's like 220, generator or shore. And then that would then go through to the main AC circuit breaker for all the individual circuits. Then the old charger was just plugged into a power point, so it was plugged into the outlet circuit. Being the Multi Plus, being a charger inverter, things need to run a little bit differently. So the cables are now going from the same way as coming in from shore power or generator through their own circuit breakers to the switch. Then from the switch, rather than going to the main circuit breaker at the nav station, it then needs to, the cable needs to run from the switch through to the Multi Plus, 
and then the multi plus back to the main circuit breaker because when we're not plugged into the shore power or running the generator the the multi plus will then act as an inverter using our batteries to turn into ac power and then that goes back through to the main circuit breaker at the nav station so in other words i need to run new cables to get from the multi plus through to the nav station to the switch and then back again Hope that made sense. Running cables on boats is not fun. <laughs> installation is complete that's just the touch screen of the servo basically the whole Victron uh, installation that we've done with the multi plus the Orion charger the charge controllers from the from the solar panels uh, this will monitor all our AC usage so when we're using like the air con the water maker all that stuff we'll be able to see what loads we're using and what we're drawing from our batteries so that screen there will tell us all that information Super important little thing to have. Uh, it's so smart, this Victron stuff. Like the Servo GX is such a smart little addition to the boat. You can plug everything into it, but like, you know, like our tank sensors, our water tank sensors, all of that we could read off of that, but we're not going that far. We're just keeping it to all of the Victron gear, so the solar, and then just monitoring our batteries and, and the AC and DC usage. I don't know if you remember a few videos back, uh, we had a, an issue running when we first tested out the air conditioners and the water maker. Uh, we discovered that they were all under the single circuit of outlets here. This is all on the AC power side. Um, so that's just, there's a lot of gear going on on the outlet. So we've since changed that to then give the water maker and the air conditioners their own individual circuit. So that's what these are here. All right, steady, steady. We are making ground, steady, steady. Well, today is the day uh, we have five crates of batteries being delivered, lithium batteries. What do we, what's the plan? Are we just going to start installing them straight away? Yeah, absolutely. First, like right now, um, we're on our way to customs to go and clear customs because we are a vessel in transit, so uh, you can have things sent to you for free, and that's what we're doing yep. right now. Yep. Um, and so we're going to sign take out boat documents and passport and stuff to get, uh, get these batteries cleared in yep. the country and then we take them straight to the boat and in they go. Just want to say a huge thank you to Roz and the ladies in the office that have helped organise this because they really have gone be above and beyond to make sure that they're coming and she's been, uh, yeah, Roz has been mediating between the courier company and us and, and yeah, we really appreciate yeah, all the help. Up. Uh, yep. The ladies at Pancor Marina are fantastic. The customer service is top notch. So, and there's yeah. definitely one person that you really needs to make a big <laughs> shout out to is you, Losha. Thank you, yes. legend. Yes, a big thank you I'll to Losha. I'll be Lusha. speaking to you quite a lot. I think over the next couple of weeks as I try to figure all this out. But thanks, man. Yeah, legend. Thank you so much. Yeah, we blown away. Blown so away. absolutely blown away. All right, let's go to customs. Well, the batteries are at the front in this big truck, but first we have to clear customs. So we've just got the officer going through the paperwork and everything first, and then we can get the batteries sent down to the marina. All right, we're a little bit confused because we're meant to be having 20 lithium batteries sent, and we were told it was on five crates. There's only one crate in that truck. Looks like there might have been a bit of a breakdown with communication and five pallets may have meant five boxes because uh, everything is on the paperwork as one crate. So yeah, off we go to the uh, marina. The truck's gonna meet us there. And... Oh, some of the power lines, he just skimmed, eh? I just don't know whether he, can, he has the clearance to get through half of these things and then like... He, he just, just charges it. <laughs> Like this one here, is he going to be able to get yeah, under that? Okay, it's gone wide.
it's Rose is basically, I call her ass kicking because if you want something <laughs> done, you get Rose to do it. I'm pretty sure she should be the new Prime Minister of Malaysia. Oh no. She gets everything sorted. Thank you so much, Rose. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Thanks. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thanks. You have me now. I'm very happy. It's a whole lot of batteries. I think the best way to do this is just get them in there before and after. Well, it's not quite after, but that's the general gist of the operation. This one bank over here, everything's sort of, the positives are all joined in the middle, negatives on the outside, and then having to use a cable because I can't use a buzz bar because the negatives are on the outside, whereas the other bank is just kind of a straight run, so all the negatives are taste in one line and all the positives down the other. It shouldn't matter too much, it's just basically turning them all into two big batteries. Uh, we have two exact same cables going to the buzz bars with the positive and the negatives. Uh, all these negatives, cables that are jumping between the batteries there, they're all the exact same length. It's very important to have exact same length cables when it comes to lithium. These lithium batteries as well, they came packaged in this black foam underneath and on top, and that's actually a fire retardant foam. So you sort of reuse that when you put the batteries in. So that's why they all got all this black foam on top. Bit of insulation, I am a bit concerned about the space around the edges. I'll have to figure out what I can use to sort of wedge all the batteries in. I don't want to put, make big wood bearers. I'm thinking maybe just like some sort of, some, some other sort of fire retardant foam like this that's came with these batteries. So, uh, to sort of wedge in between these spaces to just so nothing can flap and roll around as sometimes Nancy too might move around. Takes a bit to get her on the lane though. <laughs> oh, I love this boat, man. This is so good. Everything is slowly coming together. Look at this power. Look at it. Look at it. <laughs> oh, this. Nanji 2 is really, really turning into my absolute dream boat and I am loving every minute of it. Bit of hard work, hey, but who cares? Look at the end results. You can almost see it in the end now, like it's so close.